welcome to the Montgomery Small Cap CEO Series. Today we have got with us Lee Schofield, CEO of Alliance Airlines, uh, stock ticker AQZ. Lee, welcome to the series. Hi Gary, thanks for having me along today. Fantastic. Now, perhaps you could give us a little bit of uh, an introduction into Alliance, um, what they do, how long you've been around for, that type of thing, and introduce Alliance. Absolutely. Uh, Alliance uh, is an 18 year old business then, um, founded by four individuals. So uh, way back, um, probably the, uh, the worst time to start an aviation uh, business following September 11 and the, uh, and the collapse of, uh, of ANSET here in Australia. Uh, and I think we've had a you know, remarkable track record um, uh, since then, uh, continuous profitability listed in 2011. Um, and uh, you know, I guess our fundamental business is providing fly and fly, and fly out services for uh, blue chip miners, but uh, also a lot of ancillary aviation services that come on, on the back of that. Fantastic. And how many aircraft um, do you have today, just to give us a sense of the size of the business and that kind of thing? Yeah, today we're operating 43 aircraft, which uh, again, something we're really proud of from uh, in context, having started with two aircraft uh, back in 2011. Um, aside from other things, it's been, I think, uh, a remarkable, remarkable um, growth story. Uh, and uh, you know, being positioned where we are today with that fleet of 43 aircraft and growing, uh, you know, I think is a, is a, a great story, both, um, both financially in terms of our metrics, but also you know, operationally and what, the, what all of the staff uh, at Alliance do here. Awesome. Now, um, touch on something that you introduced to us earlier. You, you mentioned in your introduction there, it was a terrible time for Alliance to get started in the aftermath of September 11 and the collapse of ANSET. But actually, you know, the aviation market, as we know, it's very cyclical, boom and bust. Today, for instance, Qantas, our national carrier, they're bleeding cash. Yet, as I look back um, at the results you posted in June, uh, you know, those were record results and cash flows, record profits and cash flows. It's worth explaining the differences between Alliance's business model and, and that of our flag carrier at Qantas. Perhaps you can uh, take us to some of those uh, characteristics, Lee. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, uh, probably the first things we always say when we're presenting the business is that we're not an airline. And of course, the logical question that follows from that is, well, how can you operate 43 aircraft and consider yourself not to be an airline? And the best way to demonstrate that is uh, by some of the things we don't care about would, I think, ordinarily fall into the class of risk factors for a uh, foreign airline. So first of all, we don't take fuel price risk. Uh, all of our long-term contracts have variation formulas that pick up movement in fuel, uh, fuel price. So we, we strike a trip price on day one with a fixed dollar margin. And regardless of what happens with uh, aviation fuel, our our revenue moves up and down to, to preserve that fixed dollar margin. So that's obviously a key. If you were looking at a typical airline stock, fuel price movement's probably one of the first things you would consider, whereas Alliance is entirely ambivalent on fuel price. Uh, and second of all, we don't take any uh, load factor risk on those contract routes. So we, again, we strike a trip price and uh, whether there's uh, one person or a hundred people on, on board the aircraft, um, the revenue, um, or the, more importantly, the margin for us uh, is the same. So two really important uh, distinguishing factors there and, and also back into that variation formula, uh, picks up movements in uh, foreign exchange, so um, tracks our maintenance costs uh, directly, uh, CPI to pick up the labour costs. So with that metric, which is very, you know, I think airline earnings are typically very volatile and, uh, and driven by other market forces where We've shown over 18 years that we have a very, very steady and predictable earnings profile. Got it. Fantastic. Now, I was just thinking back before this interview, we've known each other for a few years now, probably more than we uh, would care to admit. But one of the things that, that I've used over that time is I've had the opportunity to see Alliance over many cycles. Um, and it's clear to me that you use the aviation downturn to your advantage to promote and, and grow the business. Um, you typically acquire aircraft at great prices when the aviation sector is in signs of distress. Can you, can you explain that and the, the impact that has on uh, Alliance's competitive position in its market, that ability to access low capital cost aircraft? Yeah, I think, and I deliberately touched on at the beginning in terms of our history because I think, we do. We are 
bit counterintuitive uh, a lot of the time, and we, and we view that uh, as a positive that we buck some of the trends and, as you put it, take advantage of uh, take advantage of the cyclical nature of our industry. So uh, we've um, we've now got an excellent track record of uh, over those eighteen years of, um, of speculative, but uh, what have proven to be excellent aircraft purchases. Um, and I think that really comes back to a few things. One is pro profit is in the buying. So when you can acquire uh, assets at a very low cost, uh, that obviously gives you a, uh, an excellent advantage. Um, ownership in itself is an important, um, uh, important trick for us. Uh, I think typically when you're leasing aircraft, then there's this uh, driver to, um, to work them hard and to fly them for the sake of flying them, even in, um, in difficult markets where um, one of the reasons why uh, we've been able to be so predictable even during tougher um, times in our business is that owning our own aircraft, we're not forced to operate them that hard. We had a very low utilisation, um, which sits very comfortably with our, um, with our low capital costs. So uh, we, can, we can park aircraft um, and, and wait until it's a better time uh, to deploy them. Uh, and on that, uh, I guess on the aircraft side, we... Um, we uh, wrote, a, wrote a book um, about our chairman uh, last year, which obviously included a lot of the Alliance history. And it probably really wasn't until we did that that it, um, the importance of those aircraft transactions really st stuck out. It, it became apparent that our history was really punctuated by, uh, at the bottom of the global aviation market, being in a position to uh, acquire large batches of aircraft and really take a long-term um, long view on those. Um, the most recent that some people might be familiar was in 2015, you know, again, coming, coming out of the mining downturn, but even FIFO, while it was stable, it wasn't in uh, boom levels, and we agreed to buy uh, 21 aircraft, but at the time, uh, the, the, the sentiment was, well, how could we possibly deploy those, and why are we buying when we've already got idle capacity, and you know, here we are five years on, and that transaction's turned out to be a, a stellar one for the company, and really positioned us for the future. And now, uh, now obviously, more in more recent times, we've just announced uh, the next milestone, acquiring um, acquiring fourteen E190s to to again uh, position the company for its next growth phase. Got it. So you know, not taking the same risks as airlines, acquiring assets at a low unit capital cap capital cost that give you competitive advantage and an operational flexibility as well, and that that counts for a lot, and that that goes a long way to explain that long track record of um, operating profitability inside the business. Now, you did mention that uh, you've made another um, investment in aircraft. Maybe I'll get you to talk us through that in a little second, but it's worth just setting the scene a little bit. So we've got 43, I think, aircraft today, and they're all of Fokker, Fokker aircraft type. And I think you mentioned that you bought some Embraer. So we're, we're, we're expanding the envelope of aircraft types inside the business. Uh, perhaps you can talk to us about um, the aircraft that you've acquired um, and the incremental capacity that brings to the business and perhaps about, you know, your confidence about how to put those aircraft or that capacity to work to keep growing the available profit pool for the business. Yeah, we, um, I guess the Fokker aircraft, there's, there's been no change in our view there. Um, those that don't know Fokker aircraft are not in production anymore, so you can't can't buy a new one. And over the last few years, with our uh, with our propensity to buy at speculative prices, we've effectively mopped up uh, all of the parcels of good uh, attractive Fokker aircraft. So if there were more available, uh, we could have used this time to buy, buy some more, uh, but but they just aren't. So we've got that 43 Fokker fleet. No change there. We still see in you know good seven to nine years of uh, operational horizon in those aircraft. They're excellent for what they do, and the uh, and as I think we've proven now, the financial metrics related to them are are uh, very very good. Um, but we, we uh, um, are going to have to do something different um, in the point of time in the future. And the uh, the market conditions coming out of COVID, I think, have really created that. So the the Embraer 190 is a uh, Brazilian made regional jet, 100 seats, pretty close to like for like in terms of uh, passenger spec for what we're operating the Fokker aircraft. So for some time we've had a view that that was the logical uh, next type. Um, but this, yeah, this transaction was obviously speculative that the, the market prices of commercial aircraft of, um, um, as a result of COVID have fallen some, somewhere in the order of 50%. So this was a uh, um, you know, great opportunity. I do think that that market will rebound 
um, strongly and far more quickly than other sectors. For example, long long haul travel is clearly the rebound is a, a long way off. But for us, 100 seat um, jet, perfect for the job. Um, it was the right time to do it. And having uh, bought, very, we think very well. There's that same game plan of we're not under enormous pressure to deploy them, um, and uh, and it sets us really up for the future. In terms of those revenue opportunities. Probably important to understand that the COVID context for us, uh, you know, where it is 2020. I don't think any any uh, business story is complete without um, without at least discussing COVID. And and we we did lose um, some big chunks of our business when COVID hit. But I, I think really our flexibility came to the fore, and, and in the space of a few weeks, we we're able to uh, not only replace all of that work, but actually get ourselves in a position where we're even better placed. So really, where we sit is very relaxed about deployment of those 14 new aircraft because. Uh, we're flat out operationally today and there's other sectors of our business that are yet to rebound. So by that, I mean the wet lease business that has been, you know, has been up to 30, 35% of our business previously today, we're doing none. So, you know, even if only a fraction of that came back, there's clearly a big uh, demand for aircraft. Uh, inbound tourism is another, another sector, you know, we're about 5% of our business pre-COVID, which is entirely non-existent today. So it's, it's, uh, I guess you don't have to be too bullish to see how those 14 aircraft can be mocked up, um, uh, pretty quickly, uh, but again, we're not in a hurry. The, the first one arrives in Australia um, in uh, later this month, so late late October, and um, and we've uh, as we've flagged, we see that going first one going into commercial operations uh, February next year, uh, and then we'll just we're infinitely flexible as we like to be. How how, how quickly or slowly we deploy those uh, fourteen, but uh, but getting the crystal ball out, you know, see, see that they'd be. Uh, fully deployed um, you know, within, within 12 months of the first one arriving. Fantastic. Well, Lee, um, I want to thank you for your time. That was a good rundown on Alliance and some of its key differentiating uh, factors out there in the market. Sounds like a fantastic opportunity to put those new aircraft to work and keep those profits growing for the foreseeable future. That's great, Gary. Thanks for, thanks for coming, having me along. Always, uh, always great to have a chat with you.